What the heck is going on in Ukraine? What the hell is a NATO? And why the heck is the United States of America telling other countries not to invade people? <laughs> These are only a few questions that I'm sure you guys have and we're gonna discuss them now. <laughs> so yesterday Russia entered Kiev which is the capital of Ukraine. Initially it only started with Western Ukraine but now slowly slowly political analysts are saying most likely it's going to take Ukraine over. Now we're living in the 21st century yeah, and we know the media lies. So it's so difficult when you watch the news you have to deconstruct everything. You have to see okay Russia today this is what they're saying yeah that's one side of the story. Then the other side of the story you've got your Sky News, you've got your BBC and CNN and then in the kind of other spectrum you've got Al Jazeera that's there and then you've got Fox News. So as Muslims what do we do? Do we support Russia? Do we support America? Don't be silly we don't support anyone. Yeah thank you. America has invaded Muslim countries, so has Russia. Both have blood on their hands mate. Frankly you guys sort them out yourself. But just like with anything else it's definitely worth looking at the facts. This is not just an isolated incident. Russia didn't just wake up and say yo I'm gonna invade Ukraine. Alright. So here there's two main powers at force. You got NATO. NATO is like 30 countries mostly from the west and these are under the influence of the United States of America. And then on the other side you've got Russia. So most analysts that talk about Ukraine and Russia don't start from a couple of months ago. They start from 1990. So after the Cold War America wanted East and West Germany that had become united to join NATO. In other words come under its own influence. Now Russia was like yo I mean Germany has smashed us twice mate. We've lost millions of people. How am I gonna go back to my people and say yeah by the way America's got Germany now. So the United States goes yo we're gonna promise you that NATO are not gonna move and I quote one inch to the east. But shortly afterwards one of the United States' presidents Clinton what did he do? Yes he let NATO continue eastwards. A Russian president goes what the heck is going on here mate? I thought we had an agreement and the United States goes ah mate that was just a verbal agreement. And then afterwards there's dispute as to whether they said it, whether they didn't say it. But if you look at the National Security Archive in there not only did the United States leaders say it, British leaders said it and so did the French. Since then it's been madness. The United States I'm gonna say under NATO has been expanding. So what the United States would do is they would conduct military parades in countries like Estonia which were nearby. Imagine right near your country there's madness going on. I mean what are you gonna think is happening? And then in 2002 the United States of America left the anti-ballistic treaty which limits the missiles that both countries have. Now if you're leaving an agreement like that what are you telling the other party? If they're increasing the missiles what are you gonna do? Sit on the toilet reading a newspaper? Not only did they do that they started arming the countries that were near Russia. In fact if you look at one of the countries that's near Russia that's got a United States base with nukes. No it's not one of these unknown countries it's Turkey mate. Yeah Turkey and Turkey ironically is also with NATO. So after all that was going on Russia developed hypersonic missiles. Now Ukraine is right at the doorstep of Russia. That's the last straw. The United States has always been obsessed with Ukraine. In fact in 2013 Ukraine rejected Europe's economic partnership. This naturally cheesed them off so they said that leader has got to go. So in 2014 there was a US backed coup which is you forcibly remove the current leader from their leadership. Now you might be thinking yeah but that's difficult to prove. <laughs> no no no. There were public sightings of CIA director 
John Brennan. In fact, where the protests were going on, you had Senator John McCain. You could see him, he was in the protest, the guy was on stage. I imagine you've got this happening next door. And you might be thinking, you know what, you're making excuses for Russia, mate. Yeah, this is ridiculous. United States would never do that. Just one second, one second. Cuba is on the doorstep of the United States of America, but it was very close to Russia. And <laughs> Russia wanted to send nukes to Cuba. The US was having none of that. In fact, there's something called the Monroe Doctrine. You need to look at that, which the United States thinks it's a God-given right to secure the nations that are close to it for its own security. However, when you got Russia, there's different standards that are being used. And then the leadership that was installed backed by the United States of America was very far right, neo-Nazi leaning. And I mean, this is according to William Bloom. He says this, now Russia used that opportunity to take back Crimea. So you can see Russia is trying to secure the countries that are nearby it, very similar to the United States. Is it right? Should you be taking over countries? I don't think so. Because China wants to take over Taiwan. And last week there were rumorings that Chinese jets were entering Taiwanese airspace. The same day Russian forces invaded Ukraine, nine Chinese fighter jets entered Taiwan's air defense zone. If you're looking at the two biggest superpowers and you're applying one standard to the United States and the other to Russia, I don't think Russia would take that. And from a purely academic point of view, you can see that Russia isn't just doing things randomly. Their surrounding countries have been encroached and if you look at this map you can see how much NATO has advanced towards Russia and Russia feels like they gotta do something now. All right guys I hope that's enlightened you somewhat about this situation and about its background. When the United States was invading Afghanistan and Iraq we were seeing positive news but now that it's Russia it's an enemy we're, we're seeing a lot of hypocrisies happen. You're setting a standard and this standard has been set by the United States after World War II. It's been a rogue state. It's interfered in 50 countries. Yes, since World War II. I have compiled a list since the Second World War of more than 50 governments the US has attempted to overthrow. It's a remarkable record. All right, guys, let's leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.